Hello everybody, Tracy Brown here. Um, it's morning, so good morning if you're watching this. If you're doing the replay, I'm sure it's any time of day for you and I'm glad you're here. I thought I would do um, a 2.0 version of intuitive eating skills. So if you have not read the book, please read the book. <laughs> a book by El um, Evelyn Triboli and Elise Reich. Please read their book. Um, preferably the newest version because there's better research, more health at every size info in that, in that version. Um, it's by far the best one. And so, um, I want to do the 2.0. So like if you're starting with intuitive eating and you haven't read the book again, read the book because a lot of people, what I discover is a couple things happen. They come to intuitive eating and don't read the book or haven't read the book and just try to jump in, which that's kind of like jump in, in the deep end of the pool you know, before you've learned to really feel comfortable. And so I suggest that you, I call it titrate, um, which is a somatic term, which means like dip your toe in and then dip your toe back out. Don't fully immerse yourself to the point where you're just like, I can't do this. This doesn't work. This is awful. I'm out. Um, and there's a reason why that happens for us. So anyway, so in, in the book, you know, and this is something that there's lots and lots of non-diet intuitive eating, health at every size. Fortunately, a lot more dietitians and coaches um, on the planet today, which is wonderful. Even 10 years ago, I started this work 11 years ago. Um, and there's just probably a handful. You know, we're talking two hands full in most states. And now there's lots, lots more, which is great. So, and we, most of us work online now too. So you can find the best fit for you from experience and personality perspective. And so there's lots of guidance if you're um, you know, ready to, to dive in and, and do that level of work. Um, but I just want everybody to know that the, the background is like, you know, when you, when, you, when you read the book, you know, they talk a lot about first, you know, giving up on dieting, which probably takes a lot of us a year just to do that step. So I want you to recognize that all those principles that they give a, you know, a framework for. So intuitive eating isn't something to make a diet out of. We all, I've talked about that many times. It's just, this, I mean, even think of principles, a lot of us get triggered by its rules and I'm going to be, we have that inner rebel that wants to like, I don't want to have rules and this, I don't want it that. And even the word principles, I think can be a lot for people. And for some people, these words don't bring up a lot of stuff for them. And some people, there's a lot of stuff. And I, I just want you to think about it as guideposts. It's like when you learn how to drive and there's some orange cones and representing other cars. Um, they're just a representation of some things that will be really helpful for you to consider. And that's all these guidelines really are. So when you think about breaking free of dieting, it means like really um, recognizing the importance of food restriction for the sake of, for any reason, is going to cause you one to have food obsession no matter what, even if it's in the guise of quote unquote healthy eating. And so all of you know my opinion about that is I don't use the word healthy because it's been so bastardized um, by the diet industry and even the health, quote unquote, industry, the medical, you know, industry that um, it, it, it's synonymous with, you know, eating low calorie or only, only eating like high nutrient dense foods. And that's not all that matters in being a attuned person. Because, again, sometimes we want to eat what we want to eat because it fulfills some other needs. And that's totally fine. And, again, when you hear people like me talk about emotional eating isn't the worst thing you can ever do in the world, that doesn't mean that we're espousing, yeah, every time you feel bad, just, you know, go ahead and eat a, a, a pint of ice cream. We're not saying that. It's, it isn't the worst strategy in the world if you're really, really struggling. Um, but, of course, you don't want to, and I say worse, I mean, I'd rather somebody emotional eat than go out and hurt themselves or their kids or, um, you know, quit their job and, and not take care of things, you know, when they feel stressed. So emotional eating isn't the whole, isn't the worst thing in the world. That being said, we are moving towards learning how to be more, build a more capacity to feel emotion, to be with stronger emotion in our system. So we're all just kind of coming from a narrow place. Otherwise, dieting wouldn't be so um, seductive to do. So if you're coming from this narrow place of being able to tolerate emotion, all we're trying to do in this process by you being more attuned to yourself through your food 
is also learning that emotions as this is a 2.0 version of intuitive eating by the way y'all but emotions are messengers they're neuro you know some you know some of the science says that they're not even neuropeptides of like actual sensation and they're not it feels awful but they're this narrow window of toleration we're learning through this process how to tolerate more and more and more and more and more and more and more to the place where it, it's going to take a lot for you to feel honestly stressed out about stuff um and so that's the 2.0 version when, ta- when we talk about intuitive eating, why dieting is so important, is you learn by being more attuned to your body and its signals and honoring it without judgment and just really being open and curious, your world starts to open as to like, oh, sometimes when I want to eat this, it means this, and sometimes when I eat the same food, it's totally something different. And you have a lot more range in your life and a lot more vitality and a lot more... Um, flow which is who doesn't want to be there right it's great so um some of the other principles you know intuitive eating talk about um you know eating with full permission that's simple to me in terms of like understanding like it's hard to do but simple in concept but what that means is like you're a grown-up and learning how to have autonomy is part of growing up and being a grown-up and a lot of us the reason that's so hard is because we've had so many things in our life happen in the past that have influenced our feeling of like again like, like well-being and wholeness and feeling that, that we're enough and that we're good enough and we don't need to defer our desires and wants to somebody else um, fully I mean I'm not saying that we don't do like if you're in a relationship with a person or you have kids you defer some of your wants sometimes for the greater of the good of the the family or the whatever but when I say autonomy it means like oh like I'm a grown-up sovereign being and I know what I want and um, I'm going to decide like at what links I'll go to get that and if it's really important to me or is that really just not what other people do and again I'm, I'm still really talking about the 2.0 version of the idea of eating with full, eating with full permission and so I'm going to talk about this in another, another video, but when people don't honor your journey, you know, you'll hear people say like, yeah, people can't get it. They can't be there for you with that. That's not your fault. That's not your problem. And it can feel like, what are you talking about? Like, it feels like it matters a lot to me what people think. And that's part of the journey with full permission to eat. That's also teaching you about how else do I do that in my life? How else do I defer my likes, my desires, my wants, my needs? If I'm doing it through food, let's practice on the food first and then start doing that. You can be doing this as a parallel track or you can do it other places too at the same time. So I just want to give you that depth of example of what I'm talking about when um, these principles um, that I consider more of guideposts around intuitive eating really are going to transfer to everything in your life. Um, so I'm not going to go into like all the principles right now. I just want to, you know, talk about those two things, you know, ditching diets and um, eating with permission. Because I think those are the two first ones, the two big ones, the two basic ones at the beginning. And what that means at a deeper level. Um, I guess I also want to say a little bit about something that's n- not talked about a ton of the book is your body image work. I mean, truthfully, if we didn't have worries about what we thought about people thinking about our bodies... I would say a lot of us, if not the majority of us, would either not have food issues or have a lot less of food issues. Now, for me personally, my food issues are really, really um, connected to um, lack of attunement growing up. And um, it was just like a series of things that I used to try to cope with um, that lack of attunement, basically. And so it's not all about body image, but, you know, if our culture wasn't so fat phobic and thin congratulating, um, we would less hook our wagons around the idea that, like, you know, we cared as much about what people thought, you know, because people weren't openly judging you or covertly judging you and you knew it, even though they didn't say anything, um, it would be one less place where we felt not seen and heard by, if that makes sense. And I know that we're, we're in, in life and that's just unfortunately how it goes. I mean, my somatic, um, 
I've got two, but one of them, we were, I, we, I was just sitting there after a session just in this place of like contemplation and almost kind of awe for like, oh my gosh, like being a human is really freaking hard in terms of how much we aren't attuned to each other and how much it matters that we do the best we can. And she was funny. She was like, yeah, life, you know, most of us probably are going to end up on the couch, quote unquote, you know, working with somebody in coaching, therapy, whatever, facilitation to get more attuned to, to learn how to be that for ourselves, whether it's food or something else. And she's like, yeah, most of us are going to be on the couch because life, you know, it's, it can be a garbage pail. <laughs> We're going to go through some stuff. And um, I, I say it humorously because life doesn't need to be perfect for us to feel okay. Um, but if we haven't had enough okayness, it's when we struggle. And so we want to have compassion for that. And so um, going back to the body image issue is that if it doesn't feel good in your system, like if you're always feeling like, like um, vigilant and worried about what's next and controlling the next and what's going on, um, you know, that's a sign that it's, it's going to be really, when people start to think about intu- doing intuitive eating, initially it can feel really great. And what starts to happen is when we lift the lid and the container of all that stuck, pent up stuff in our bodies and our systems, then that's when we start to kind of like have good, basically good, good and bad days with our food. We think it's about like, it's just new. And sometimes that's true. It's just, it's new. Um, and we're worried about what people, people think about it. But I think so much of it is like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling stuff that I haven't had access to and for a good reason. And I don't even have, don't know what it's connected to sometimes. And that can be really confusing and disorienting what's wrong with me and nothing's wrong with you. It's just that you're feeling stuff. And um, a lot of you who have worked with me personally know about my analogy. I got this from Irene Lyon. Um, Kind of a a place that I've learned some somatic stuff from too. And mostly nervous system health health from actually. Um, But this concept of like, imagine our bodies. And when we are really... um, full up basically of stress where there's like really hyped up and we're really low and kind of depressed and can't get going. Everything feels hard. And what's the point? It's essentially like your body, which is your swimming pool. So full up of beach balls that there's no movement and you feel like you're stuck and you can't get going. And when you stop dieting, you stop binging, you get more access to all that sensation that's stored up and stocked up and might be from like when you're two and you have no memory of, or it could be from 10 and, you know, you were told it's no big deal, but actually it felt like a big deal when you were 16 and, um, a, you know, somebody you really liked, you know, said they liked you and blah, blah, blah. And then they didn't call you back and it was a big thing and you felt devastated and you tried to pretend like it didn't bother you that much. That's, and you didn't process that, that's stored up stuff. Or when you were 40 and that happened, I mean, anything can get stored up from anything that we don't, at least, um, if it feels highly charged and emotional, can get stored up if we don't have a, a have safety enough to to feel it and move through it and so um that's one of the reasons why people they need to know and i'm saying this for all of us to need to know like this is why this process takes time this is why when people start intuitive eating you know after t- maybe two weeks or two months they feel start to feel like oh my gosh this is so much what am i doing i want to go back Yeah, because you're feeling a lot more stuff. And it can feel like definitely some body image stuff and some diet culture stuff. But I think a lot of it's just this that people don't know about. And so I want to tell you that that, that's what it's about. And to give yourself some compassion to start putting in tools to feel things, whether it's gentle movement that's not about exercise at all, whether it's, you know, getting, getting, you know, talking to somebody about it, whether it's journaling, whether it's being in nature, Um, whether it's just feeling your feet on the ground and doing that consistently, whether it's prayer, whatever it is to feel like you can build your capacity to feel stuff. So the food can have its place. Like, so you can, and I don't have two hands here, but like food can be over here and sensations and emotions, not that they're separate, but you can separate out what's hunger, what's physical hunger and fullness and what's emotional hunger and fullness. And what does this need? And what does this need? And taking care of things with the tools that are necessary to help you navigate. And again, that doesn't mean that it's just like, oh, I'm going to do all these tools. And it's not heady at all. This is a very like messy 
embodied process. So it's not going to be like, oh, I do this and I feel this and step 10 and then I get to this result. It's probably not going to be like that. It's just going to be a lot of learning and up and down and nonlinear stuff. Um, so what I want to go back to about that is, so with the beach ball analogy, it's your job. And, you know, if you're having help with this, like somebody like me or somebody else, the job is to, can we move out some beach balls? Can we get rid of them somehow? Can you pop them? Can you suck them out with a vacuum? Um, whatever embodied imagination might work for you in a way that like you feel like you can do because you can't make yourself do this if you don't want to do it or it doesn't feel safe to do. And so um, how all this is going back to intuitive eating and the 2.0 version is I want people to understand the depth of this work. This is what this video is about. And then, the, again, I know I'm going back. So going back around full circle to the, the body image thing is that if our sense of worth around our self is really tied to our bodies that has so much to do with feeling like we're just worthy in general of being here of taking up space of people wanting to hear us and listen to us and feeling like that we're important um, if you don't feel like you have that you're going to be we're going to be really vulnerable to all the cultural messages of the world that say that you need to be this then to be lovable and if we're um Probably this is what my, my future book is going to be about. Um, attachment, like food issues to me are very much about attachment hunger. We want people to f feel, you know, if we're seen and heard, it's like we can start to do that for ourselves and we start to just care less about what people think about our food and body. It just builds that way. It's not like overnight, but it builds that way. And, you know, that's why you all reading articles and being in groups and doing your sessions and watching videos like this and doing podcasts are so important to learn that um, the people like me who do this, we really, 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 really care because I mean, me putting myself out there in this kind of way, it's not that hard anymore, but I still, you know, really care about your becoming. I care about you leaving me messages so I can answer that and so you can get heard personally. I care about that deeply, which is why I do this stuff. Um, and what I take out, you know, an, um, f you know, 15 to 30 minutes of my day, you know, almost five days a week to do these things and not because I want you to see me and like, look how great I am and all that. It's like, I want you to know that you can do this and it can happen by you fully if you can't fully show up for yourself, show up with me to help you teach your system that it's safe to do that and that people um, are safe to be around, that people do care, that people want you to move through and get fully free and thrive in your life. And so <laughs> this is my, what my version of intuitive eating looks like. It's not just the food, but it's so coupled with the food that if we don't address these things and let it f have it light and let it and be in the light for you to see it. It's like, oh, all this pain and all the stuff you tried to figure out yourself and all this, like, um, you know, I've been doing intuitive eating for one year or two years or whatever many years or months, and it's still kind of hard sometimes. You know you can have compassion for it because that's, this is why. Um, you're, we all, we, everybody, including me, we're all still learning how to be more fully embodied, and it's, it's not an easy job deciding to be, human as much as we can and um yeah so it may you know i'm wondering did this video totally diverge from intuitive eating 2.0 my initial version yeah probably but that's okay i'm totally okay with that being kind of like all over the place and maybe messy but maybe getting exactly where we needed to go so i hope you like this video hope it was helpful i want to hear your your, your comments. Um, please share it if you think that somebody else could really benefit from hearing that like as they're working through the principles expect things like this to come up and know that it's just a deeper process and so they're not crazy for feeling that way and they're not feeling like that something's wrong with them but like yeah when you start letting go of dieting a lot of stuff's going to happen and so it's just not about intuitive eating principles even though that stuff is all necessary and it's great and it may sound like I don't do a lot of food work in my sessions, but I do. It's just that as we do that, as time goes by, we start to see this stuff come up. And so we don't pretend. We don't pretend like that's not happening. And, you know, we go there so we can untangle all this stuff and get the food 
and body image stuff and movement stuff really clear about what needs to happen and that makes that process go so much faster so anyway thank you all for showing up please comment tag me um share it because um i just think that people would benefit from knowing that it's it's much deeper than like i ate i let and it's so important i'm not dismissing it but you eating with full permission and you you know having chinese takeout for breakfast like i do sometimes and um cookies and milk for lunch occasionally for breakfast like I, do, like I do sometimes is super important. That food work is all super important. I have tons of videos about all like breaking that stuff down to little steps about when food journaling is good for you, when it's not good for you, how it could help you, how it can be not so good. All that stuff's really important and we have to start there. And, you know, there's this piece that I also want you to know about as well. All right. Well, thank you all so much and I hope you have a great day and take care. Bye.